Okay. So just wanted to talk uh, briefly, just kind of to talk some about the midterm, make sure that you kind of know what to, to look at, be prepared, and there'll be plenty of time to answer questions if you have specific questions. But the, the midterm, I assume we're gonna be back in person by Monday. So we'll have in-person exam uh, Monday, 1130. You know, the class period's an hour and a half. I'll probably have the exam be an hour and 20 minute exam. So we'll have five minutes to kind of hand out exams and five minutes to collect them. The material is going to be kind of everything we've covered through lecture on Monday. Uh, so uh, the error material from the first week, distance measurements, both taping and EDM. Week two, leveling, and then all our angles uh, we talked about last week and on Monday, uh, sort of tying it all together. I always write a new exam, so the format uh, varies year to year. I usually have the majority of the points be workout problems, but there often are some, some short answer. Sometimes I make multiple choice. Um, more often, I have some, some short answer and then some longer kind of workout problems. The types of problems I work in lecture and the types of problems you have on homework certainly are good examples of the, the types of format and types of uh, questions you may be asked. So homeworks one through four would be, uh, be included for that. And then I posted on Canvas here this morning, a couple things. So there's a, a cover sheet. The cover sheet is what will be provided with the midterm. So the, the typical equations, be it for taping or corrections, um, you know, most probable value, standard deviation, uh, error propagation. So that most of that's kind of from from uh, the first week of class. We've got our taping sort of corrections uh, included there. We've got leveling errors due to curvature and refraction, our basic differential leveling equations that we utilize, uh, the stadia uh, multiplier like we did in lab last week. We've got a precision requirement as far as that misclosure uh, for various classes. And then we've got our sort of angle information. So we've got our uh, bearing and our azimuth uh, notation, how they sort of vary. Uh, here I've got the information about the EDM measurements and their frequencies and wavelengths our vertical angle uh, part from our, our notes last week with our average zenith angles equation, calculating delta x and delta y with the azimuth that we create, and then your, your basic sort of trigonometric leveling equations there. So I think that kind of covers most all the look up type things that you would need to, to find. So you're not expected to memorize those. And then you'll just be given a problem with various questions, various data, and um, you can look at this as, as needed to complete those. Another item posted is uh, the sample midterm, and I've got a solution for that as well. And so the sample midterms kind of intended to be kind of like just some review problems that would be uh, perhaps just review some of the, the main concepts. So here's a short answer. This is just kind of sig fig type problems. We've got a question with 10 different measurements. And then from that, calculate most probable value, standard deviation, 95% error. 
you've got uh, two taping problems uh, to, to kind of work work on. Oh, look there, I got, oh. Well, I'll just go with this. Uh, so, you know, we've got the, the solution here, kind of worked out on that one, but uh, we've got a profile leveling problem. Um, so the, the profile leveling, you've got the basic uh, back station, you've got your start elevation at your benchmark, and then you've got your rod readings in the table as far as your, your turning points and your foresights and your intermediate sites. And then you just had to do the calculations to, to fill in the rest of the table. Got angular misclosure. So angular misclosure, if you're doing a polygon, like we've been doing triangles in lab, you know, the triangle should add the interior angles to 180. Uh, and so I think I, I talked about that in, in class on uh, Monday uh, where you can add those interior angles. We know that it should add uh, to 180. If we don't, that's a that difference is your misclosure. And so this here's a five-sided. And so a five-sided traverse, they're not going to add to 180. The general relationship is the number of sides of your polygon minus two times 180. So for the triangle example, you got three minus two is one, one times 180, that's why they sum to 180. If you've got a five-sided traverse like this one, it's five minus two is three, three times 180 is 540 degrees. So these angles should add to 540. Uh, and if they don't, that would be your misclosure. We've got a magnetic bearing problem where you're given the magnetic bearing 1884 declination uh, is asking for the true bearing. That's kind of the geodetic uh, bearing for that. And then last item here is a four-sided traverse. You're asked to find angle D. So only three of the sides are given. And then once you find angle D, then run through to calculate azimuths of each line. Um, so that would be just like we talked about uh, and worked on in class last week where you've got your azimuth, back azimuth, field angle, azimuth, back azimuth, field angle uh, procedure to run through there. So that's kind of what's on the, the sample exam. Um, I think, you know, again, the, the sample exam, the homeworks, the uh, problems in, in, in lecture, those are kind of all, uh, all good material to kind of review and work through and be familiar with. So uh, that's kind of the spiel I wanted to give as far as uh, information to look over. And I think now I'll just kind of open it up for, for questions people might have. Yeah, I was gonna ask like how how good do you think it would be to study like the sample midterm rather than like everything else? Like how close do you think studying this midterm rather than studying everything else? Because like if we study this midterm, do you think that'll put us in a good position for like roughly the same amount of problems that are gonna be on the midterm? Um so let me look content wise first. Uh, content wise, you know, these kind of problems are very similar to the homework, right? Mm -hmm. We had some sig fig problems. We had a, a data set, most probable value, error intervals. So that's just like the homework. We got two taping problems. Uh, I have plenty of taping problems on the homework. Uh, this is a profile leveling. You know, and so for sure you're going to have either differential leveling or profile leveling or uh, three wire leveling, some some version of uh, leveling problem you're going to have. Uh, you've got then some some angles. What? Uh, yeah, you know, this this uh, sample exam doesn't have 
you know, some, some basic short answer that could be on there as far as like, hey, here's an azimuth. What's the bearing? Or what? here's the bearing. What's the azimuth? So being able to convert between those, um, we did some examples like that in, in lecture. Uh, but calculating misclosure for all types of problems are, are good. So we've got misclosure with our, um, uh, our leveling, where we sort of loop back to the same point and calculate what it should be, um, or, or the calculated value compared to what it was when we started. That difference is in disclosure. Compare that to our precision requirement. We've talked about that procedure for our polygon. Once we measure our field horizontal angles, that we add them up, and you know if they don't add to the necessary n minus 2 times 180 requirement, then that's your disclosure. Both of those, you can adjust either the elevation or the angle um, if you meet that precision requirement. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't think that the types of problems on the midterm are any different than the types of problems that we had on the homework. They're just other problems to work. Um, right. As far as um, length. Let me look at that. So we've got a short answer. This would be a longer problem. Um, these are relatively short um, sort of taping. Uh, this is a, a temperature taping problem. This one here, we've got a slope distance and a tape length distance. Um, uh, so slightly different there. Yeah, you know, leveling problems. This one's a little bit longer. Uh, you know, it's kind of repetitive, so it, it takes a while just kind of plug all the numbers in your calculator and and plug and chug. But um, so there's lots of little points to check there, but it's not overly uh, overly long. And you know, in some ways, these kind of problems are should should be rather clear, like what you need to do. Like you got the table, you got to fill it in. Um, uh, if if these types of problems pop up, um, so I would say this specific sample exam, you wouldn't have an exam longer than this uh, because this has several sort of workout problems with the the standard deviation and the taping. Uh, you've got a big table there, um, yeah. And to be honest, like if you had all these problems on the exam, this is probably a little bit longer. You know, a problem like this, uh, you know, can can take a while to do the azimuth and back azimuth. Uh, the standard deviation can take a while. Filling out a table here can take a while. Um, so this this sample exam might be a little bit longer than you would expect the midterm to be. I'd say often there's kind of uh, several workout problems and then some some shorter problems, uh, and the shorter problems could. Could either just be short little short answer problems or uh, some some one line kind of multiple choice or something. And as far as like textbook definitions, like asking like what's the difference between geodetic and plane surveying stuff like that. Uh, so that could be something that would pop up on a short answer multiple choice. Um, so if it was a uh, that's one thing I I didn't mention. So thank you for that prompt. Um, the, the learning objective. So with each kind of uh, week's material, I've kind of posted some different uh, learning objectives. And so those are very useful to study um, and just kind of look through, make sure that uh, you feel comfortable answering those. And so like, you know, week one there, one of the definitions, define precision and accuracy. So elements like that that were learning objective, like, yeah, uh, you should be able to define those and those might pop up on the multiple choice or short answer, and you'd, you'd need to uh, be able to offer a, a definition. But if it's uh, not been something uh, that uh, we've explicitly talked about or, or looked at a definition, um, then you know those probably wouldn't pop up on the exam. OK, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a question in the chat about um, field notebooks.
So, uh, Connor, I don't quite understand your question about the field notebook. Um, you just you're just handing those in at the exam. So there's no you you complete the field notebook you know before then, and so you're just handing it in. So there's no time uh, time criteria there. If you're not taking the exam with me, you're taking the exam in the testing center. Uh, then you can just drop it off at the box uh, front desk, sort of handed to Sam or whoever is running the, the exam. Other other questions? So that email I sent out, um, you know, talked about the the field notebook. So. Make sure you look at that rubric as far as uh, things to include, common uh, point deductions, uh, and fill that out. So it's complete table of contents, labs one through three, and just have it ready to go. You'll you'll hand it in at the exam, and then I'll work to get those those graded and back to you later next week. The group that has lab on Tuesday. Um, you know, I'll probably have at least at least half those uh, ready to go um, by by Tuesday's lab, and you only have sort of one one note take taker for each group. So I'll make sure that uh, there are at least a a couple of them ready per per each group. Are there any um, any content areas, any specific problems um, people want to look at? No. Uh, let's see. It's this Barian azimuth. Okay. For Barian azimuth, you want to um, just look at how to convert between those, or are you talking about like a, a traverse type problem where uh, we'd have field angles and go through the yeah, yeah the traverse type problem where you have field angles and such. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Let me do this. I'm at home, so I don't, and I don't have my stylus to write on the computer, but I think I've got another tablet I can get to work here. So let me, let me give this a try. So... Not sure. Okay. Can you see the the screen there? At least the, the blank screen there. Okay. So yeah, let's say we've got a. Yeah. You know, four-sided scenario like this. And let's say we are A, B, C, D. Let's say we've got these angles that are measured. And let's say angle A here for, um, I'll just kind of keep it in, in basic degrees to uh, keep it a little simpler notation. But likely on the exam, you might have sort of degrees in minutes, um, you know, degrees, minutes, seconds for a traverse type problem. I, I usually don't go to that level of detail um, just because it makes the math more complicated. Um, but you might have sort of degrees, minutes. So we've got 95 degree angle there. Let's say this one is a 88 degree angle. Um, let's say this one's 85 degree angle. Uh, this here is kind of a question mark. 
we've got our north arrow here. And let's say we're given that the initial bearing AB uh, is north 45 degrees to the east. So for this type of problem, you got to look and identify your start point and your start point is going to be that line AB and you can choose to either start at A or B, um, whichever seems easiest for you. I'm gonna go ahead and start at A and um, if we want to calculate the the azimuth of line AB, we can just use the basic start point where we know the bearings northeast 45. And so in the northeast quadrant, azimuth and bearing are the same. So that's just 45 degrees azimuth. And pictorially, let me change my color here. So, that is that angle there. That's the, the 45 degrees. We've got this field angle here that is given as 95 degrees. And if we add those two together, that's your azimuth plus field angle, that'll give the azimuth of line AD. So the field angle A is 95 degrees. We add those two together, we get 140 degrees. And you know what that is meaning in, in our diagram is just that relative to, to that north arrow, that azimuth of that course AD is 140. And so this is our azimuth of line AD now. So um, to keep going around the, uh, the traverse, I need to calculate my back azimuth DA and then add the field angle D. So let me take a little segue here and figure out what that angle D would need to be in this case. In practice, th this is kind of, um, you know, there's a, a sample problem in the midterm, sample midterm that's sort of written this way. And this is kind of an easy way for me to make a, a problem on the fly um, as far as not knowing an angle, but you know, it would add to a certain number. Uh, in practice, the surveyor, would always measure all these angles in the field. Um, and so we wouldn't leave this to just some, you know, oh, you know, what does it need to be? Well, we would measure the fields so that we could evaluate our disclosure. Um, but this is kind of more just a way to test that, that basic concept. So we've got a four-sided traverse. So N equals two, our uh, polygon, should add to uh, n minus two times, excuse me, n doesn't equal four, uh, to n equals four. The, the angle needs to add to n minus two times 180. So that's two times 180. So our four-sided polygon should add to 360 degrees. What we have, we've got 95 degrees, 88 degrees, 85 degrees. So pull my calculator, 95, 88, 85 adds to 268. And so angle D should be the difference between 360 degrees and 268 degrees. So that's 92 degrees.
Any questions so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So we've got that 92 degrees for angle D. And so to continue with this problem, I'm going to calculate my um, back azimuth DA. And to do that, I either add or subtract 180 to my azimuth from the other direction. In this case, I'll add 180. And so that back azimuth is 300, yeah, 320, 320 degrees. Then I add in my field angle at D, which we just calculated was 92 degrees. And that gives us our azimuth DC. So 92 plus 320, that's 412. The azimuth is between zero and 360. So we just subtract 360 to kind of see the, the difference there. So that's a uh, 52 degrees. Pictorially, we, uh, what color, can, I'll just do red color here. So pictorially, what that means is that if we look at our north arrow at vertex D there, that the angle, clockwise angle from that north arrow to that line is 52 degrees. So finishing out the problem, uh, we then are gonna calculate our back azimuth CD. So we've got back azimuth CD. And so that we need to add or subtract 180. So we'll add 180 degrees. So 232 degrees. And then we're going to add our field angle at C. That's our 85 degrees. That'll give our azimuth CB. So that's 317 degrees. So need to finish out our sides here. So let me scroll on down. The move this over a little bit. Okay. So we've got the back azimuth. DC. We need to add or subtract 180. In this case, adding 180 would make it over 360. So I'm going to subtract 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up a little bit. So 317 minus 180 gives us 137 degrees. And then we're going to add the field angle at B. So that's our 88 degrees. And 
gives us 225 degrees for the azimuth from B to A. And I'll just go ahead and calculate the, the back azimuth to make sure that we uh, get what we started with. Back azimuth AB. We would add or subtract 180. So in this case, subtract 180. So that gives us 45 degrees. And so that's just a, a check saying that we get back to what we started with, so we're OK. Questions? Okay, um, well, that's kind of the, the discussion I kind of wanted to have, just kind of give you an opportunity to ask questions if you had them and kind of give you a general description as far as what to expect for the midterm. So if there aren't any other questions, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and stop. I'll hang out for a couple of minutes in case a question pops to mind, but otherwise, have a good day. Uh, so Tom, the I have posted a equation sheet with the sample midterm. So that equation sheets, two pages, kind of gives you an overview of all your uh, reference equations and uh, example, uh, for, you know, reference equations and other sort of information that you don't need to memorize uh, for the exam. Um, but that's kind of what will be provided and there's not additional notes um, that are allowed. And the ones that take the longest are the ones that have the most uh, most calculations. So I think those are usually somewhat transparent just based on the, the problem. So if there's a standard deviation type problem, if there's 10, 10 data points, like the example, uh, the example uh, sample exam, that would be long, you know, because each 10, you got to find the residual, square it, find the standard deviation, et cetera. Um, so often if I have that type of problem on the midterm, I might just have uh, a fewer number of measurements to make that process a little bit faster, but still kind of test those concepts. You know, I mean, if you've got a leveling can be simple, um, but it can be more involved too. If you've got a bunch of different stations and then you got to keep calculating, you know, height of instrument and height of ground, height of interest, height of ground, uh, doing it over, that can be you know, a little bit longer. Um, the example like we just worked through where you got a sort of polygon, you got field angles, you got to calculate sort of um, direction of each side, you know, those take a little bit of time to just kind of run through that process. So 
off the top of my head, those are kind of the, the problems that perhaps um, take the most amount of time. Um, uh, so partial credit, I usually try and <clears throat> try and give partial credit where it's uh, warranted. So, uh, you know, let, let's say this, this uh, example I just worked through, for example, let's say you made a mistake and didn't calculate angle D correctly. Let's say you came up with 90 degrees instead of 92. Um, well, you would have presumably gotten the azimuth AB right, added the field angle at A right, calculated that back azimuth. Uh, but then once you got to add the field angle at D and all the uh, next sequence of azimuth back azimuth, so you have an error because you had the wrong uh, wrong angle. And so for that kind of scenario, you'd have a deduction for missing that calculation at D, but if the rest of your procedure, the rest of your math was right, it's just all slightly off because you had the wrong calculated angle at D, you wouldn't lose all the rest of the points. You just have that one mistake that you made. So I usually, um, um, yeah, I guess consider it and try and be be generous and not count off ton if you just made a small mistake. All right, uh, <clears throat> looks like it's just down to three people, Abdul and uh, Dishna. Do you have any questions or feel? Yeah, I had a question about the lab. So okay. I know you sent out the email that Tuesday's lab was canceled and I'm in the Friday. So if we go in person, are we still gonna have lab Friday? I'm kind of, um... I'm thinking that I might use Friday as a makeup opportunity um, just because, yeah, I like to keep the Tuesday and the Friday groups kind of doing the same thing. And since campus was closed yesterday, um, that was a excused absence, if you will, from, from lab. Um, and so I don't want to get the Tuesday and Friday sections out of sequence. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and I know there are some students that have missed a, a lab already. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen is that hopefully campus opens back up, you know, tomorrow uh, and that we could then make Friday a makeup lab opportunity. So if a student had missed one, either Tuesday or Friday, you know, lab one through three, they could make it up, but that I won't be running the planned lab for activity um this friday okay yeah sounds good and our field notebooks do monday with the midterm correct yeah well thank you for all the questions answering all the questions yeah all right well hopefully we resume to normal pretty soon and yeah good luck getting your work done yep thank you yep